Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And we had just finished our live stream and my phone died. <laughs> like it died right after we, like right as I hit stop, it uh, died within like a minute. So it's charging now and I figured, you know what? I have this nice microphone that I, you know, have used in previous videos for other things. Why not just uh, use this and have a, a different kind of video? So we have our friend Venom the Duck here and he's gonna walk us through these images that are from the trailer. And we're gonna make a couple videos of this. I figured it's like, you know, three in the morning right now. And uh, I'm just like, well, I'm after my surgery, I'm gonna get plenty of sleep. So why not make a few more videos tonight? And, uh, and talk about some fun things I saw in the trailer that Andy Serkis did not go over. Because obviously I pointed out that I thought it was silly that a bunch of YouTubers were making breakdown videos about stuff that basically Andy Serkis was saying. But uh, I feel like there's some things here that I haven't seen anyone cover. So uh, let's, but of course some of this is theories, but some of these could also be spoilers for the movie. So if you don't want any of that, you know, please walk away now and, you know, you know, come back when I don't have like a, you know, a, a speculation video like this, uh, you know, but the next like two or three videos will probably be exactly like this. So, uh, so we will miss you. Uh, come back after you see the movie, you know, when it comes out later this year. Um, so first up, obviously we have the Ravencroft shot here, which, uh, I really like this looks cool. It looks a little bit like the Griffith observatory, which is, uh, funny. And I'm glad I thought of that and was comparing it to Griffith observatory because later on in this episode, we're going to compare it to another shot and uh you know and i have a theory about that so ravencroft obviously from the comic books there's still the five issue ravencroft miniseries that we haven't gone over yet on the show and i promise we will do that at some point in probably june if not by the end of this month but we'll definitely get to it in june and we'll go more through the history of ravencroft in the comics but uh yeah this is kind of the arkham asylum if you will of of the marvel universe compared to you know arkham and dc comics um, but there's some neat stuff here. Uh, obviously, uh, the main thing I want to talk about was Shriek. Um, Shriek is a really awesome character from the comic books. She first appeared in Spider-Man Unlimited number one. Her real name is Francis. And she um, she was like, uh, you know, just like an inmate uh, with, with, I guess, Carnage or, or Cletus Cassidy. And so when Cletus breaks out, he runs into her and the two of them bust out of, you know, jail together. So I think they have a different relationship in the movie. Um, obviously, something that uh, obviously something that Andy Serkis did point out was that uh, Shriek had a very rough childhood, and I'm wondering because she we can't see her other eye, but this eye here has a scar over it, and uh, it looks white, almost like she's blind in that eye. I don't know if that's the case or not, um, but it's definitely a little departure from the look of her in the comic books. But I still like it. It's it's a little subtle-ish. It looks a little like the crow kind of too. Um, but if, if she is blind because of some, you know, horrible thing that happened to her when she was younger, uh, which, you know, Andy Serkis alluded to, that could add to an interesting character. It could, it could um, add something to her. So, uh, so, you know, I wanted to give a shout out here because Naomi, who plays her, is uh, awesome. Like I, I've been a big fan of hers for, for years, since 28 Days Later. Um, and then she was in the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. And it's so great to see her that she's going to be a part of this franchise now as well. And uh, and hopefully we see much more of Scream. But, uh, but yeah, I really like this character. So the, here's where you get to see her powers, where she's, um, she's uh, I don't know, I guess she's screaming. <laughs> Which is a little different uh, from the comic books. Obviously in the comics she kind of puts her hands together in a praying position. And it causes a, a you know, like a beam to come out of her hands. Uh, so it looks like they're doing something a little different here, um, but uh, but still something that could be, I don't know, hopefully cool. I like the the setup that she's in this container and because of whatever her powers are, it looks like she's screaming and just everything's flying around her from the force of the scream. That could be neat because that could make her a very powerful weapon against Venom, you know, separating Eddie from the symbiote and stuff. Uh, so that could give her the edge, which could be really cool. Um, or maybe it's just they haven't finished fully what her powers are going to look like and so this is just a version of it that we're seeing um, but either way you know, i like this shot i think it looks really cool uh so then that brings me to uh what i want to talk about last in this video so make sure you leave your comments about shriek down below um, i'd love to hear your thoughts because we're going to touch on her one more time here because what also andy circus said was that she he alluded that she had a childhood love that she was treated very poorly as a kid and uh, had bad uh, bad upbringing and stuff, and then she ended up meeting, so, you know, a young love. She made, you know, she fell in love with somebody at a young age. And a lot of people online, and myself included, obviously are thinking that's Cletus Cassidy. Um, but where would she meet a young Cletus Cassidy? Would they have met in their neighborhood? Is it coincidental that two people growing up in the same neighborhood, you know, uh, are you know end up getting abilities of some kind later on, uh, or is it this place here? 
So obviously in the trailer you saw this burning building, and I think a lot of people assumed it was just Ravencroft uh, because, you know, we saw Ravencroft early in the trailer. But remember what I said, Ravencroft looked like uh, the Griffith Observatory. It had like domes on it and stuff. This building does not have domes. Uh, this looks more like a mansion uh, or a school almost. Uh, in fact, uh, it looks a lot like what this could be. If you remember this shot, uh, Andy Circus posted as one of the first shots of the production that Andy posted online, which was the St. Estes uh, Home for Unwanted Children. Remember in the comics, St. Estes was like a, a school for like a, you know, wandering boys or something like that. It was like young boys that, you know, didn't have a home, they're young orphans. Um, I can't remember if it was just boys or not. I thought it was just boys, like a Catholic thing. Um, but this one, it says home for unwanted children. So it's, you know, it's, you know, boys and girls. Um, and so, yeah, so St. Estes here. So I thought maybe this building that catches on fire that we have two people walking out of, maybe this is a young Shriek when they're, you know, teenagers and a young Cletus. And, uh, and maybe this is, this is the other crime that Cletus committed. Because if you all also listen to Cletus in the trailer, when he's narrating, he says, you know, Eddie, you and I are a lot alike. Um, we make decisions that leave people behind and they sit there and wait in the darkness for us. And that made me go back to, uh, Francis here and think about, oh, what if he's referring to, uh, you know, Francis who he left behind, uh, he went, they went on these dark paths and she got separated from him. And now he's, you know, maybe wanting to get back with her, wanting to find her, you know, just wondered whatever happened to her. Um, it, it could be interesting and it could be interesting to see if it's a one-sided love, like if she cares about him and thinks about him because he was the one good thing in her life. And if he is dismissive of her, like Joker and Harley Quinn style, or if they'll do something different. But I definitely got Harley Quinn vibes when I saw her in this cage, you know, using her abilities. It just reminded me of Suicide Squad when Harley's all alone in a big stone room and she's in a cage in the middle of the room. It reminded me of that too. So who knows, maybe they could do a Joker, Harley Quinn thing with Shriek and Carnage. But either way, I don't know what's going to happen. But it just made me think maybe this building on fire wasn't actually Ravencroft, maybe it was actually St. Estes, and that this image here is a young Cletus and young Francis um, walking away from it, because obviously that's what Cletus is doing. He's Eddie's interviewing him to try to find out where these other bodies are that Cletus killed that haven't been pinned to him yet. Um, and that's uh, that's kind of the story. So we'll talk more about that in another episode coming up. But these are just some images here that, uh, you know, our friend Venom the Duck helped me show off to you guys. So let me know what you think. Um, you know, for those of you who stayed and watched the whole thing, do you think this is possible? Do you think that that's actually St. Estes and not Ravencroft? And uh, do you think any of my theories could be uh, true? Or if you have a different theory, let me know what yours is down below. And as always, we'll continue the conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.